If you work in pharma or life science, this idea about understanding proteins at a really uh, you know fine grain level is really cool and exciting. And, it's, and especially using these new AI ML tools is something that we've been working really hard on. Yeah, like what our customers are telling us is that like, it's not isolation, right? Like they want to use these advanced laboratory technologies and these advanced AI ML tools together because that's where they really get this cool insight that they can build therapies out of. Let's do like a really quick like high school biology real fast. So, you know, when we say a protein, obviously this is uh, this is a molecule. This is a part of our, of our bodies and the food that we eat. This is responsible for a lot of the systems that we, you know, our bodies do every day. But at, at the fundamental level, it's a, it's a chain of amino acids. And understanding not just the sequence of these uh, amino acids, but how they fold in three-dimensional space is really important to understanding how they function. So if you have a protein that maybe is involved in your immune system or is involved in how you digest food, the actual physical shape of that is key to, to its function. If you actually look at some of the most successful therapies of the last few years, um, many of them are actually proteins. So uh, I mentioned the, the mRNA vaccines. Their actual active form is, is a protein. Um, also things like uh, Keytruda, which is a, a really important cancer th therapy from Merck. Um, it's a protein. It's a monoclonal antibody. So understanding the structure of these molecules is really, really important to Im improving healthcare. So, but there's been some changes in the way that... that work is done in this field, right? Yeah, that's right. You know, no longer are we in the space where you're only forced to do all of your, you know, investigation in a laboratory. It used to be that way. Like if you wanted to understand how a protein functioned, you got into a lab and you rolled up your sleeves and you put on a lab coat and you did some experiments. And that's, you know, that's how I learned and how many people learned. Um, and what has changed, I think, is this availability of these new tools. And so um, one of the, the things we've been talking a lot about with our customers is these in silico or computational pipelines to understand proteins and design new therapeutics. So it's this idea that you can start with a with a therapeutic concept, like oh, I need to target this um, this part of a virus, or I need to um, create a protein that interacts with this this cancer signaling pathway. Um, you can actually now use algorithms to design the protein structure, the backbone. Um, take that backbone and guess a, a sequence that might synthesize or turn, fold into that, and then use techniques like these folding algorithms now to assess the quality and, and actually synthesize these proteins for testing. Um, this was not possible even just a couple of years ago to do this uh, at, at scale using AI algorithms. And so um, at AWS, when we've looked at like how can we help our customers accomplish these kind of tasks, um, what we've tried to do is build a pipeline and the frameworks that you can kind of plug and play these different modules in to really make these workflows better. And I mean, the thing that originally caught my eye when you were talking about this on our internal Slack was the fact that you added some more folding algorithms. You know, alpha fold and open fold and ESM folds. There's a lot of these, you know, X folds out there. Um, things like alpha fold and open fold, I, I think that companies are still using them because they're very highly accurate. You can uh, use them to analyze a molecule and be fairly confident that what you're seeing is reality versus what we call a protein language model which is very similar to kind of like the, the GPT approach or the, the large language model approach. Um, this is a much faster way to analyze a protein. There's, there can be more error, but it's a good way to do a, an initial screen. So for, for our perspective, when we talk about what tools do we need to offer our customers, providing all these different options that fit very specific use cases um, adds a lot of value. So we have a brand new uh, solution guidance on the AWS website um, specifically focused on protein folding. So if you go to this link, um, you can find this includes an, an overview of the type of problem that we're solving. Um, it also includes a, a reference diagram here of, the, of our recommended architecture. But probably most importantly is we provide um, a CloudFormation template so that you can stand this up in your own AWS account. And I've personally been working with a couple of customers. We actually will have some really cool references coming out um, a little bit later this year where they have either just implemented this from scratch or they've adapted it for the use case. But it really makes it easier if you're starting from, from nothing. Um, you can quickly stand up some infrastructure to try out these different these different algorithms. And so when I went out and talked to you know folks who are working in the space of structural biology what i heard was oh we like working in jupiter we like we like these more more data science focused environments 
for run this computation. So, so you're right. In in this architecture, this this notebook is the interface. It's how you would submit jobs, but all of the compute, you know, running these folding jobs, running this analysis on a GPU or a CPU, that's all handled by AWS Batch, um, which is really great. It, it it helps abstract a lot of that work away from the customer, so they can focus on the actual science going on. Um, the other thing you call that, which is cool, is because this is all containerized. So every, every one of these algorithms lives in its own Docker container. This is all open source. If you want to go take this container and run it someplace else on your own machine, your own you know Kubernetes cluster, you absolutely can. Um, it's all available in our GitHub repository for you to for you to download and modify. It's just again, if you want to get your hands dirty and start playing with this, um, this is all available in our GitHub repository. So right. it is all open source. You can see this um, now in our AWS Solutions library. And this includes both the CloudFormation template to stand up the batch environment and the ECR repositories, um, but also the uh, Docker containers to run these algorithms. So again, if you want to download these and run them in your own environment, this is all open source. Um, have at it. The one thing we do ask is that we love to hear feedback. So um, if you have ideas for how to improve these workflows or you'd like to see new modules implemented for a certain use case, uh, please let me know. Uh, we have an issues option here. You can log issues or reach out to us directly um, on email. I'll put up a I'll put an email address up on the screen. It's it's askhpc at amazon.com. So if there's any questions people have got, comments or feedback they've got, they can use that email address to get the feedback straight back to us. And we'll put you in touch with Brian and the team and, yeah. and uh, you can get started. What hang on, what's Jack Hammer? So Jack Hammer is a way to analyze a protein sequence and compare it to a bunch of its ancestors. Uh, and it is one of the data prep steps before you go and use AlphaFold or OpenFold. Um, it's actually kind of hard to set up. It requires a lot of data. And so what we try to do is make this as easy as possible to get up and running. Brian, thanks for coming in today and showing us all of this. Good to see you. Take care. If you learned something from this talk, then please consider giving us a like and subscribing to the channel so you can find out when more videos like this are available. And if there's an area you'd like to see us go deeper into, uh, don't hesitate to reach out and let us know. See you next time.